This is the One Step Better Podcast. Helping small businesses make wins each and every week. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. It is season three of the One Step Better podcast. I am Mike. This is Matt. At this point, uh, you probably know who we are. Hey, what's up? So really excited to have you. Uh, It's January, so that means it is time to talk about New Year's resolutions, goals, things that we're going to try to work on in 2023. So we're going to do that over the next few weeks. So Matt, here's where we're going to start. What is the longest amount of time that you've gone to start a year that kept your New Year's resolutions? I would say the best I ever did was probably like August. I had probably, now, do I still have it today? No. Uh, (laughs) 10 years ago or so, I said, I'm going to work out. I'm going to have a trainer. I'm going to do it every week. I probably lasted a good eight months before I went on a trip. No, I actually, I got hurt. I I hurt my knee playing some tennis at the time. And that was the end of me wanting to go work out anymore for for (laughs) quite a while. But I did a really good job for about eight months. That's uh, probably the longest I've gone. One of the big ones I had was to read a book a month. And yeah. now I'm probably consuming three books a month. But that's not really – it wasn't just like I wanted to I wanted to really be an active reader. I like to read. I've always liked to read. I wanted to get in the habit of like I want to have this goal of doing – Was that like book. a written goal? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. A book a month. Yeah. Well, yeah. Very good. Yeah. So I guess it did create a habit that is now permanent because I cons- – now I also consume books through Audible today, which is super easy. Do you count – Audible listens as a read? Heck yeah. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I mean, if I didn't, I wouldn't read any books. <laughs> no, I read, pro- I probably physically read a book or two a year, maybe. I did just read The Gap and the Gain, and it's about 50 pages. Yeah. <laughs> I count that as a whole book. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm a big consumer of Audible books. Yeah. My favorite book is one of my favorite books, top five book, is uh, like 100 pages, but it's like, 35 chapters like each chapter is like two pages yeah so it makes it look a lot longer than it really is uh and i I read that book about once a year and it is always like yeah i read that entire book it took it takes like two hours to read the entire book ever looked at your badges and stuff and the time you you listen to stuff i'm actually pulling up now total time i have three months 12 days 10 hours 26 minutes of my life that i've been on audible (laughs) so that's a long time if you start adding it up it's like dang that's kind of fun. I want to go back and look at see how many books I read last year. Well, they do the end of year. They do like the recap thing. It tells you, all right, here's kind of the genres, the books, the, yeah. that type of stuff. And that's that's always interesting yeah. to see. We can't wait to get that maybe to come out here the first few days in January. I haven't seen it yet. Well, today we're going to talk about development, um, how we can stay engaged in, in, in developing ourselves and the importance of it and some, some things that, that you guys do or that we do uh, in order to, to try to make ourselves better. Um, and so obviously books is a big deal. What, what do you think is one of the, the top... I don't know, top three or so books that you read in 2023? Atomic Habits. Like all those books, they all sound so simple. Mm -hmm. The actual execution is nearly impossible. I reread a couple books. Uh, Raving Fan was a big one I reread this year. I had a couple of business books. I, I do. I did get more into the Dan Sullivan track this year. We, you know, I got it plugged in with Strategic Coach and reading 10X was something I did or listened to 10X. Um, and it just is a mindset shift. It's really not the idea of how do I actually physically get to the idea of 10X, but around the idea of you should be thinking what would it look like if I was 10 next? It helps you kind of create a, a bridge to there, which I think was interesting. And then the gap in the game, which was when I did at the end of the year, I really liked it. It really helped me. I always felt like I was never satisfied that the goal line kept moving and I never felt like I was really getting to the goal line. And that's really the point of the book is you should be not living in that. That should be your next set of goals, not the where you're as, always aspiring to be the, at the goal line because you're never going to get there. Finding contentment in the progress that you've made mm-hmm. versus yep. the progress you have you'll not get, yet made. You get excited by what you've accomplished, which will re-energize you to go to the next set of goals. Yeah. So it kind of goes in with this. Other than books, what are some ways that you try to stay sharp? I go through a couple different exercises. We do that pretty regularly, but like on the EOS side, it's elevate and delegate. What is What should I be working on versus what I am working on? Really clarifying my role in the organization, but even like making sure that I'm doing the right things for the betterment of myself. So it's stuff I really enjoy doing as well as it, those should align with what I really want um, my role to be in the organization. Like, so aligning what I really like to do with the things I'm really good at and I'm passionate about, the more I align those things, I think the better. You? Uh, I mean, books are probably 
the top of the mm-hmm. list. Uh, yeah. I, like, I mean, there's always some book that's interesting, um, whether the content's good or bad. It's always interesting. Um, podcast. You know, yep. there, you know, there's a handful of podcasts I listen to somewhat regularly. Um, I find Two all- Bears, One Cave, uh, <laughs> the Kelsey Brothers. Uh, <laughs> there's some Nate that Bergazzi. I listen to just for the fun of it. <laughs> yeah, Nate Bergazzi. Uh, Shout out to all those other podcasts that we love listening to. There's, you know, there's we'll lessons. tag you in our meeting notes so we can get a little bit of your trail. <laughs> lessons to be learned by uh, comedians, yeah. probably. They're running an interesting businesses. All of them are. You yeah. know, it's, it's a model. The thing that I find about podcasts and books and, and whatever, you know, conferences, stuff like that, um, is it, it forces me to think about things that aren't naturally coming to mind. Even like you, know, you talk about um, uh, Atomic Habits. Simple concepts in the book, right? Simple concepts. It's not hard. The premise is basically do the things that you want to to be known for. Like, you yep. know, start to do the things that you want to build habits around, right? That's a pretty good, you know, starting place. Mm-hmm. If I want to lose weight, it would make sense for me to eat healthy and exercise, right? But the... The, the execution, bike. The execution right, right. is the hard part. But it is easier to execute whenever those things are front of mind. And whenever you're in the rhythms and habits of listening to a, a book or reading a book or um, being around people that are doing those things, uh, it, it's easier to, to get into those habits. And so I, I find that the, the break of rhythm, of natural rhythms, whether it's you know, home stuff, work stuff, or hobby stuff, whatever it is, um, it forces me to think about those things. Uh, and so it's not, it's not necessarily the concepts are earth shattering. Mm-hmm. It's uh, a, a focus, a refocus a lot of times on, hey, you know what, you should think about how you're developing your employees, or you know yeah. what, you should think about how you could be a better husband, or you should think about how you could be a better dad, or here's some, you know, or, yeah. or even finding empathy, like, yeah. hey, you know what, having a bunch of kids that are young has some days that really suck, and we've been there too, you know, yep. it's like, yeah, so you can read those books and just kind of high-five the air and think, yeah, I'm not alone, yep. uh, and, and so... I find, you know, books, podcasts, uh, hanging out with people, that, that, that's really, I mean, I don't know of any other way to, to develop myself. And, um, but it's really important to do those things because yep. without that, then I can't really lead uh, my family, lead, lead people here at work or, you know, whatever it is because I'm, I'm empty. Part of our big goals for this year are that we really want to work on our team's personal developments we were talking about mm-hmm. today, their overall development as leaders, their, their develop understanding what we believe as a firm and incorporate those learnings into a bigger piece. One of the things that I thought was interesting that you brought up when we had our leadership meeting was it's on the employee to own their own development. I think that Explain just- Explain that to me. Yeah, later. that for me, that just comes out of my own mindset. I don't ever, you know, in uh, seven habits, right? Yep. Uh, habit number one, is be proactive. And I think that's super important because if I'm proactive, then I'm going to go get whatever it is that I need, that I want to get in the world. Uh, I'm not just going to be passive about it. Everybody has a, a choice to make in life. If I'm going to go and be proactive about the things that I want, and I'm going to go figure out how to get those things, or I'm going to sit back and wait for somebody to come to me and help me and do something for me. And I just choose to not be that person. Um, and so if I'm at work, even if, you know, let's say that this is day one, I'm a new employee here at Patrick Accounting and Works. One of the first things that I'm going to try to do is, is learn as much as I can about the history of the company and who the people are around me and what is expected of me in my role. I want to, you know, dive deep into those things so that I can start to add value as quick as possible, because I know that the more value that I add, one, it's fulfilling for me. But also, I will be rewarded for that at some point in time, whether it's at this job or, or a future job on the skills that I learn. Um, and so I want my team to do that. I want my team to, to be mindful enough to say, this is something that I need to know, and I don't know it, and I need to figure out how to learn it. Whether that's raising their hand to the people around them and saying, can somebody help me? Or it's finding uh, professional development courses that they need to go take. Um, Whether it is going and taking a course at a local community college or reading a book or whatever it is. People that are proactive about finding knowledge, finding information, developing themselves are going to be more successful in every area of life. The framework which you talked about this one is... This doesn't mean that we as a firm don't have a responsibility to support their own learning. Yep. And it, what it means is I have to own the fact that I may not know everything that I n- need to know or I need I have a deficiency or I have a skill set I'd like to learn. 
it's it's up to me to initiate that movement of hey this is something i like to know what resources do i have to go find this stuff out as a framework as a firm we need to have a framework of these are the things we believe in mm -hmm. and we want you to incorporate your self learning into that but it's not like no no these are only the courses you need to take this is you need to check off all these boxes and then you're good it's not about that it's really about yep. the concept of you know we want you to have a learning mindset uh, I'm, I'm always improving i want to yep. keep getting better absolutely right? it, it comes kind of contrary when you say it's up to you to go get your own training that's not what sure we're saying. no that's no, not no, what no. We're saying, absolutely right? yeah that's that's a good point the burden of development of our team falls on us as leaders not them as employees um, i firmly believe that i'm also like we're a small business right Every one of the people on our leadership team, as well as the people that are in leadership positions, whether it's manager, whoever it is, all of them have full-time roles that they're fulfilling that is not primarily focused on developing other people. Because we're a small business, we right. don't have a department of called training and development. You know, We don't have an HR staff that's going to, in most, uh, almost all, if not all, of every client that we work with is the same way. They don't have dedicated staff that's responsible for training and development. So if that's true, then as, a, as an employee, I am going to be mindful of the fact that my boss has other things on their plate. I'm not going to wait for my boss to come and say, hey, Mike, here's some things that you need to work on. But I do expect my boss to do those things. Correct. Um, and so that's that for me, it's, it's the gap between my leaders, my boss, my, you know, wherever I'm working are going to do their best to develop me. And I know because I have the people smarts to know that it's not going to be perfect. And that's perfectly fine to flip that around from us as leaders. I want to do everything I can to develop my team. And I want to be able to point out skill gaps, knowledge gaps, whatever it is to help them fill those gaps. But I only have so many hours in a day to do my job on top of that, even though that should be a pretty you know, critical piece of my job. Um, and so whenever my employees are coming to me and saying, hey, Mike, here's some things I need to learn or some things that I don't know, it's helping me do my job as a leader. It's cross and I appreciate that. It's cross assessment. I mean, the ownership of you knowing and identifying the, the your areas of weakness and strengths and developmental needs and where you want your career to go and what you are interested in learning and what you feel like you're deficient in is critical. Our job as leaders is to also either subsidize that and give them the, the proper feedback. You know, I do agree with you, or I see this as an area, you may not have seen this, but I think this is an area. Yeah. Um, maybe we want you to think through what you could do to improve this area. Our, I see this, one of the things I'm super impressed with our team is I mean, we ask these questions regularly and they all say, yes, I would like more coaching mm -hmm. and training. And I feel like this is some areas I, I'm not doing great in. It's self-awareness to know, like, Correct. I am not yeah. good at holding people accountable. That's one of my own weaknesses. Hmm, what do I need to go do to do that better? I need to, you know, do I need to go do some role playing? Do I need to go do some reading? Do I need to go listen to some how to be an effective leader or provide yeah. candid feedback or... And so I've done a lot of reading in those areas. It's still not my strength, but I know I have a deficiency in that. I don't like having difficult conversations. Well, I read the book, How to Have Effective <laughs> Difficult Conversations. And so like, that's part of your job as uh, personal development is to be self-aware enough to know that you're, I'm not perfect at all the things and no one is. And as long as I'm trying to get a little bit better, this is very, I think of Ted Lasso, this is Roy Kent yeah, in the yeah, last yeah. episode. You know, he finally gets to become the Diamond Dogs and it was, bro, you've, come a long way, but he still feels like he's failing. Yeah. That's the gap in the game. It's all this stuff. It's all tied together, but it's like, you have to realize where you've been and where you're still trying to go. And as long as you keep have that momentum, of, I want to get a little bit better. I want to get a little bit better. I see an area I need to improve upon. That's part of your personal development track. And that's, that's the culture that we're trying to build. And, and I think for the most part, our team gets that. Mm -hmm. We want employees that are constantly striving to be better. We call it challenge. It is our core value. Um, and that is they're challenging themselves on how I'm doing my job. What should I be doing that I'm not currently doing? How can I um, you know, move up uh, into another position? How can I take on more responsibility? How can I add more value to our clients? Um, 
those are all questions that we want our team asking because it's it's one it's fun to work with people like that uh, yeah. you know, i want people that want to get better eagles fly with eagles yeah. you know they're not hanging out with buzzards right um and and we want our team to be a bunch of eagles that yeah. are soaring and, and yep. killing I, it. I, I think about the actions tied to this you know so as we're as you're starting the new year and you're thinking through this you know there's some exercises in your self-assessment that you could go through obviously if you have a clear you know I'll say progress report or annual review process. They're going to give you the, the actual physical criteria of those things. But most people are self-aware or should be self-aware to know, you know, that isn't all encompassing. That's just the task of the job generally yeah. I have to do. What are some exercises they could go through to help them to establish the rhythm of identifying areas of weakness, areas of opportunity, you know, I kind of think through a couple of exercises here, but I'm assuming you have the same ones in mind. I think, well, I, the first thing I think about with that is you have to be humble enough to look in the mirror and realize that the ceiling of your entire team is sitting right there in front of you. Mm -hmm. I believe everything rises and falls on leadership. And to the extent that I'm not a good leader, I have zero chance of having my team be developed and, and even becoming leaders under my tutelage. Yep. Now they can go do that on their own, but um, I think you have to be honest with yourself and say, these are the things that I struggle with, these are the things that I'm good at. And then from there it's connecting, where can I get help? But you have to be super brutally honest about that because if you're not, then then you're gonna miss the boat altogether. Um, you are the ceiling for your team. So in the very beginning, I'm assuming there's identifying your areas of you know being self-aware, documenting maybe what you think you need some work on. Um, so I, I think of the exercise to elevate delegate for yep. me, which is the, I love doing this. I'm passionate about it. And I want to continue doing this or the, I hate doing this. If I wanted to learn how to fly this year, if that was one of my goals, which, which is something I'm actually working on, if that was true, okay, I would like to have this skill that I do not have. What do I need to go do to make that happen? I need to go figure out how the process works, how to go find a, the appropriate school, how much it's going to mm -hmm. cost me, do I need to save up money? But it's the same thing, like, if I am, uh, if I don't communicate effectively um, through email, let's just say that's, I mean, or through written communication, what can I do to improve that? I got to get feedback on my writing. I got to get, I may try to see if there's tools out there that can help me, you know, all the different things. Part of it is identifying first the problem. Yeah. And then it becomes, you create a plan to achieve that skill deficiency. Yeah. Whatever that may be. There's, there's just humility that comes with realizing this is what I want to be and I'm not there. I need to go get help. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's perfectly fine. I would encourage you to go to people that you think are strong in that skill or, you know, whatever it is and just say, Hey, how, how did you learn that? How, you know, what have you done to exercise that muscle? You know, how did you get to where you're at today and, mm -hmm. and be open to their feedback. And then ultimately you have to be willing to say, all right, they said, I need to do X. I need to then go do X, right? right. Oh, beginning of the year, number one goal in, in the world is how do I lose weight, how right? I lose weight. If I go to a trainer and say, hey, you know what? I admire your physique, your, your discipline, your routines, your eating habits, whatever it is. I want that same outcome that you have. And that trainer says, all right, you're going to go to the gym four times a week. And here's going to be your menu that, that you're going to follow every single day. If I don't do the things that that person is saying, then I'm not going to achieve the same results that that person is going to uh -huh. achieve. And it's easy to look at that from like a, a weight loss standpoint or you know, a lot of the like tangible the things. Goal and not goal. Yeah. Right. But if, if my goal is I want to bet, I, I want to have, um, I want to be better at having difficult conversations. And if, if I go find somebody that I think is good at that, Hey, what do I need to do? Those are a little bit harder to identify. Um, uh, hard, you know, so that's where you have to, dig in a little bit, you know, maybe there's some books out there, maybe there's some podcasts out there and pick up little nuggets. Um, it, is, but it is more difficult, I think. I mean, I, I think about my experience of trying to find a trainer to help me. It was, I had to be very clear with him. Look, I am very out of shape. I am nervous that this is going to last. I'm not going to be able to sustain this. I'm not trying to do this in a short period of time. I had to be self-aware to know, like, I'm going to, it's going to hurt really bad. And I don't really want to go through that pain. So we need to baby step me and just, I don't yeah. have to have this happen overnight. I need you to hold me accountable. I need you to say, hey, man, you're out of rhythm and hold me accountable to being here. And a lot of times it was, hey, if you cancel on me, 
within 48 hours, you're going to pay me anyway. And that has to be painful enough and dollars mm -hmm. enough for me to go, yeah, I'd rather just pay you than not work out. Yeah. So I had to be very clear with him about that. Yeah. It's the same way with that effective communications or whatever goals you're having. So you said, or we've said this, this is a goal that we have as a firm, you know, both to improve our, our development of our people. How do you start to establish the culture of the people in your organization that have the, to have the same mindset? Oh, that's really change management, right? How, yeah. if, if I'm not that today, how do I become that? Um, step one is you have to become that yourself as the leader, uh, as, as the, the person that's responsible for, for influencing others. Um, you have to do those things, whatever that thing is, you know, if it's, I want to develop, you know, better, difficult conversations, I have to develop that skill set, And then I'm going to bring people along to see that skill set so that they can understand that that's, that's something that's expected. But that is a long-term play. It's not something I can't go into my t entire team tomorrow. Tomorrow we're gonna be a learning organization. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, here's what we got going on. Yeah. I think we need to be better at, you know, whatever, sending emails within yeah, yeah, two minutes of yeah. receiving an email. And so tomorrow that's going to be who we are. Yeah. And uh, that just, it doesn't work. No. It, it doesn't work. And so you have to be able to develop that. Um, and then I always say you have to get caught doing the things that you want to be. Yeah. If I'm doing something really well for a long period of time, but if I don't get caught doing that thing, then no one around me is going to know that that is a thing. Uh, and so every once in a while, you have to place a little bit of games and, and maybe do a little bit of tricks and um, and make sure that you get seen doing the thing that you want to replicate within your culture. Yep. Um, uh, because if you don't, then people aren't going to realize that that's a, yeah, that's a thing. Yeah. And so from an organization standpoint, you know, you know, I think back, first of all, it's identifying the skills you want people to have as personalities of a learning mindset. If you hired a bunch of people that don't have a learning mindset, to create that may be hard. It's going to be difficult. So this is not a short-term play. This is a long-term mm -hmm. play about slowly changing your culture. This is a slow change of your culture. You're not going to change this overnight. I would say you're going to set expectations. You know, you're going to set internal expectations of what that means, but you're also going to be trying to put the parameters and guides and guardrails up so that you're bringing in the right type of or people to organization. You're going to celebrate that learning Yeah, mindset. I think that's the big one. Yeah. You're going to celebrate that mindset. That is, that's me catching you and showing everybody else mm -hmm. that I think that's awesome. Let's do more of that. And you're going to do that over and over and over again. And you're going to challenge your team to go, what is the thing that you think you struggle with? Yeah. And just shut up. Yeah. And, and <laughs> it, that's, I think that's super wise. I think that's what's helped us probably more than anything else in developing our culture is, is publicly celebrating the things that we catch people doing well or that we want others to uh -huh. do. Um, to the point where they begin to shout out their teammates for doing the same thing. That's the point when, whenever I look at our team and say, oh, they okay. got it. Yeah. yeah. Like it. That's working is not when someone on our leadership team or you maybe say, hey, Anna, great job on X, Y, Z. It's when Anna's peers notice yep. that and shout her out. Because at that point, the principle that's trying to be caught is uh, has infiltrated the culture. Yeah. And it takes time. And, mm -hmm. and you're going to have people that buck the trend and don't want to do that and you have to be thick skinned enough to go, I gotta, I'm gonna keep working on them. I'm gonna mm -hmm. keep working on them. Yeah. That's okay. Um, people move at their, at their own desire to change, right? That's, that's yeah. part of it. Um, you know, we, I want to encourage, shout out, reward, compensate all the things and skills that we want people to have. I mean, we want to reward attitude. We want to re reward learning. We want to reward client satisfaction and improvement. Because those are the things that matter to us that, you know, it helps us be the, you know, the organization we want to be. We have to put that into all the things that we do. Not one of the things, not one time. It's the repetition that yep. and, and the overall belief that it's the right thing to do. So I know historically I've always struggled with the balance between how much you train and develop and learn and, and have, you know, meetings or trainings versus actually producing work. Mm -hmm. You, they don't have to be independent. And yep. so if you put it in and you think about it from an infiltration of your whole organization, we're always learning. Everything we do has feedback. We meet with everybody regularly. It doesn't have to be like we have like, well, we have to have a class four times a week to make this big. No, I have to do it in everything we do. Yep. And it's hard to remember that. You lose sight of that sometimes. It is. It's it. It's like everything else. There's so many things going on. It's It's difficult to keep up with all the things that you're responsible for as a leader. Uh, and so you got to figure it out as best you can. Yep. Personal development is hard. It's self-awareness, number one. 
mm-hmm. gotta know where you're weak and, and ask for feedback. Be always challenging yourself. So, well, Matt, it, it, this uh, yeah, has been a good conversation. Um, something different, something new. Uh, as the podcast drops, I'm gonna give you a code word. Um, the first person to reach out to uh, One Step Better at works.com, W H I R K S, with the code word, is gonna win some special swag. And that code word today is going to be development. So reach out to One Step Better at works.com. In the subject line, put development, and you're going to get some swag. So uh, make sure you do that, and then subscribe so you never miss another episode, and we'll catch you next week on the One Step Better Podcast. Thanks for listening to the One Step Better Podcast. we really appreciate it if you would take some time to rate us five stars on your podcast player of choice, and make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you never miss out on another episode. Thanks, and have a great day.